Reggie, you're at spring training, Mr. October, standing behind the batting cage, giving tips, and I see some of these young minor leaguers, and I think to myself, what must they think when Reggie Jackson, a guy with 563 home runs, is giving them hitting advice? What is your role down here, and what, what are you telling these kids? Um, it's my, my role is to do what I'm asked to do, uh, do what you're told, and, 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 and do it. Um, you know, be an asset in any area that I, you know, see where I can help uh, players, whether it's talk to a young infielder, whether it's talk to an outfielder or a pitcher and give some insight on what the game is about, uh, is about what we would expect from a Yankee, you know, with the tradition and its history and having pride in the uniform, et cetera. Certainly, I focus um, on what's going on with the hitting. Uh, I make sure, however, that I'm communicating with Kevin Long and Butch Weininger, who are the other, you know, hitting people here. Kevin's in charge of everything. So if I have some insight on a hitter, I'll uh, make sure that I communicate with Kevin and what we've talked about so we're always on the same page. You know, through our minor league system, uh, Jack, we talk about hitting. We talk about what the offense should be. And everybody is talking the same theories and having the same understanding and making sure we have the same, uh, you know, approach as an offensive player on the major league level. That's on the field. You said something interesting here too now. You said talk to some of the players about what it's like to be a Yankee. How much did it mean to you to be a Yankee? Um, when I came uh, in 76 and signed in November of 76, played 77 through 81, uh, my agent had talked to me about playing against the Yankee history and that he thought the Steinbrenners or Hank St um, George Steinbrenner was involved in maintaining the integrity of the franchise and the brand and then of course you talk about the franchise and it goes from Ruth to Gehrig and then DiMaggio and Mantel and Yogi and Whitey uh, Jeter and myself and Thurman and those players that are here to continue uh, to make the franchise what it is and so it's impressive to be part of the franchise. It's something that you should be privileged, you need to recognize it's a privilege, it's not a right. We had a meeting the other day where Carlos Beltran had gathered um, just about as many of the Latin players throughout the minor league system. And it's the first time I'd seen it happen in the years, all the years I've been here since 76. And then of course I came back full time in 93 to where you gathered the Latin American players and talked to them in their own language about what's important and what the opportunity is and to recognize that it's an opportunity, it's not a right. You have to earn it and to recognize the, the wonderful privilege it is to participate as a Yankee, one of the greatest franchises, I think the number one sports franchise in the country, but on its worst day, it, it's one of the best sports franchises in the world. You've talked about a lot of great Yankees. One of the guys that you mentioned is Derek Jeter. I know you have a close relationship with him. I've asked you about Jeter before, and you, you've talked about in the postseason that he, he doesn't let the game speed up. Were you surprised when he said that 2014 would be the final season for him? Um, I was not. I was surprised because I thought he would come and play and see how well he did uh, at the time. You know, I remember when... I thought my time had come to when it was time for me to retire and there really wasn't anything that was going to get me off that and I think any of the great players in the history of sport I think Derek Jeter, Derek Jeter is one of the great players in the history of sport and I always try to say that you know there isn't one thing that he did that was great throw, hit, hit for power or anything like that but at one time for six, seven years, he was the greatest player in baseball. <laughs> he was the face of baseball, the face of certainly our franchise. And any time a player talked about Derek Jeter and you wished to play for a player, he was the player that people named. And so the sum of him as a player was that he was a great champion and a winner and just set a stage or set a precedent, went about the game that is admirable for the greatest players that played. He set a standard to where you'd look at him, and I would say I could look at Derek as a Hall of Famer and say, gosh, I admire the way he played. I would pay and buy a ticket to see Derek Jeter play. Someday, five years from now, uh, Derek Jeter will join a spot where you are, Hall of Fame. When you go back to Cooperstown every year, what do you most look forward to? Who do you want to talk to? Because I have to imagine when all those Hall of Famers get together, the conversations much 
he's, he's so rich and so important. Uh, Jack, there's, you know, the things that I enjoyed the most when I went to the Hall of Fame and I was in the Hall of Fame for five, six, seven years. I've been in for 20 now, 2013. Um, and it was such a thrill for me to see Mays, Aaron, uh, Warren Spahn, um, Stand the Man Musial, and people like that, uh, Koufax, and uh, Henry, and, and Willie, and, and Stretch. Um, now my, my fraternity of Morgan, Bench, Seaver, that crowd are the guys that I enjoy seeing. Smitty, Rod Carew, those guys. Um, you, you just you have a kinship to them in the same way as when I see, you know, Robin Young, Jim Palmer, uh, as when you see the players that are going to be coming in now, Maddox and Glavin, of course, and you see Joe Torrey, and there, there's an understanding that he is a Hall of Famer at what he did, whether it's pitching or managing, and it's a fraternity that maintains a, a, a close friendship because you respect what the guy did. Reggie Jackson is sitting at home. He's got the remote control, and you're flipping through the channels. You see highlights of your three-homer game from the World Series. What flashes through your mind? Because I, I know you're staying on the channel. Nobody's, nobody's leaving gonna that channel. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, what do you remember? I mean, because you, to be able to do that on that stage, three different pitchers, three I, swings. I, I think, Jack, for me, is I appreciate the moment and I'm grateful for the moment. I think when you get older, you know, the thing that you do in the morning is you thank God for another day. You thank God for your health, for the opportunities. And I think when I come in, and I'm with the Yankees, and I have a relationship with the Steinbrenner family and the dad and now the kids. Um, I saw Joe Torre the other day. And, and the memories and, and the appreciation for the interaction that, you, that you've had with all these people that are here, you're grateful and you're thankful, and you recognize it's a privilege, and you give thanks. I try to give thanks as often as I possibly can. When I see people asking for an autograph or someone stop me in a mall or stop me in a restaurant, I try to remember that this person is a, a, a person that admires what I've done. I'm a good memory for them, and let me try to stop and take the time. I can't all the time, but more times than not, I do enjoy stopping and trying to fulfill that person's, you know, make them happy for that moment. You've had so many people who have touched your life and so many people who you've influenced. If you had the opportunity to put together a dinner party, people past and present, so even if someone has passed on, who's at that dinner party that you want to be able to have conversation with and enjoy the time with them? You know, the first person that would come to mind I, I, hopefully I get a chance to see him, but if I, if I wasn't going to go to heaven, I'd ask to see Jesus. Now, uh, I would love to see Martin Luther King, um, and I would like to see my dad and my mom, of course. Uh, I would love to spend some time with Jackie Robinson. Um, you know, I would want to see some of the people that I played baseball with and some of the people that passed on that I remember as a child, whether it was one of my school teachers or whatever, the room would certainly be full of friends and family. You talked about Jackie Robinson. I don't think we're going to find a Jackie Robinson card in these packs because if we did, it would have to, it would have to be a legend series. But I've got some 1981 Topps baseball cards, and we always end these shows by opening up the cards. And just, I want to make sure it hasn't been open. Okay. No, no. It, it hasn't I, been open. I would not cheat. So I, I turned it over to I back. I will say this. It, it feels as if the gum is a little is a little broken up. I don't think either one of us should try and eat. Yeah, but we. I, I used to eat the stale. Oh, wow. Look at that. There, there it is. Nice and stale. We can't do it. Don't do it. It is. So it could be with crumbs. We're going to make these uh, crinkles and sprinkles that you can <laughs> sprinkle over top of your. Don't do dairy, it. Over your Dairy Queen. Andre Dawson. That's a good start. Steve Trout, left-hander. Mike Cubbage, left-hand hitter. Frank LaCourt, pitcher who lives in Monterey near me. Uh, Bombo Rivera, remember him as yes, an outfielder? We've got uh, Johnny Oates, catcher, and uh, later managed the, um, the Rangers. Texas Rangers, yep. played with the Dodgers, played with the Yankees. Mark the Bird Fidris is here. He had a good slider. That's kind of a fun thing here. Who we got here as we continue? Fernando Arroyo, he was a pitcher, uh, played with the Twins. Al Hraboski. Oh, yeah, the Mad Hungarian. Mad Hungarian, Kansas City, St. Louis Cardinals, Atlanta Braves. Uh, Billy Allman, you remember him as mm -hmm. an uh, infielder that played with San Diego. Randy Neiman was a pitcher who pitched with uh, Houston and a few other guys. Pitched with the White Sox. Uh, John Fulgram, who was a, 
a St. Louis Cardinals pitcher. And if I can get the last guy, Glenn Abbott. Well, I hit a nice home run off him in Yankee Stadium once. <laughs> now, wait, we have to debate. I didn't go through my cards, but I'm going right to my ace in the hole. So Dawson, I guess, would be your number one Hall of Famer? Yes, Dawson. I'm going to throw a Tom Seaver at you. Oh, boy. I give you all of mine for Seaver. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, I think I win, but for because you were so gracious, I'm giving you both packs. I'm taking it, buddy. Appreciate the time. Thanks very much. Thank you.